Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, got it on on now. Do you know? Right. Setting up on Facebook Live. What's that behind you? Broncos. If it's the mighty Broncos, the great entertainers. Great something. What? Great something. <laughs> uh, I still can't get rid I still can't get rid of them jerseys. Talking. The ladder's upside down. I don't know what I don't know what's going on. I mean, yeah. I look at the NRL and it's upside down. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody wants that uh, Iron Man jersey. Nobody wants it at all. I don't it, but it's too big. I could sleep in the thing as a bloody tent. You know. <laughs> yeah. Right. If, yeah. If I if thought I'd go. Large, I'd have it off you. I might. I might still as a as a keepsake, but um. I'll measure it bit to bit for you and see what you think. Because right, sometimes them sizings can get a bit funny. The problem is the Aussie size is a massive. I mean, that's a medium, and there's room in there for you know, some more as well. Oh, and yeah. I'm I'm not as slim as I once was. So oh. um, this, this one's a large, and this. Yeah, so it's not well. a so it's not a D eight D H gate jersey, is it? No, no, it's not. No, I've just found all the. Uh, I've just found. <laughs> there's Wigan Saints, OKR Leeds. There's all the. Uh, all the oxen jerseys are on this DH gate, so you can get a Leeds journey for fourteen quid. Oh no, I'm not bothered. I bet uh, if, I, if I see Eagles, I'll go crazy. I mean, because it looks as though they're doing another whole company. Um, I'm waiting for England jersey. It's very it's, nice. Oh yeah, I think that's a cracker. Yeah, mm. yeah I do like it. But anyway, welcome to welcome Eagles to chat. So we've been away for a few weeks. The last time we was on. We had Mr. Bill Gardner and Ted Dowd. We had the two of the great stalwarts of the Eagles from the 90s on the show. And it was very, very interesting to have Bill. And um, and it was awesome to have Ted on as well. Uh, I, I always keep saying Mr. Sheffield Eagles, no matter what anyone thinks. I've had them, what, that, what that fella's done for Sheffield Eagles in history is amazing. So, but uh, tonight is a very, very uh, crazy subject because tonight it's the 10, it's the greatest games in Sheffield Eagles history. We're not saying 10, we might be more, we might be less, but I've got my, got my man off the top of me head that I think are the greatest games. I'm going to shock people. I'm going to shock because I'm going to tell it straight away now, the 1998 Challenge Cup final is not my greatest game in Sheffield Eagles history. It's number three. It's not number one. But uh, more than that later. I'm sure Mark has got his wonderful list as well. Got a few. I've got an yeah. order. I've just picked. I've just picked ten. Um, I picked ten from the well. Nine are from the modern era. One from the uh, pre-merger era. Yeah. Uh, because I didn't watch a lot back then, as you know, I wasn't really around then. But I have got yeah. a couple of games from that era that I have seen that were just amazing. So. Um, uh, well, yeah. well, so why the why the why the jerseys? The reason I'm wearing this one is I think this is the greatest jersey in Chef Regal's history. There's nothing to beat this jersey. It's a beauty. <laughs> Just because he's even got trophy at the bottom of it. I've even I even found one that got trophy on the bottom. <laughs> uh, so um, that's uh, yeah, see, I might have another one soon, but I'm keeping that under wraps. But if I get it. Oh my God! This is the uh, this is the second Holy Grail one, because this one is a beauty. It's a debut shirt by a certain person from 1985. Darryl, is it? Oh no, not Dabble. Yeah. Oh no, he, we'll put it this way: it's Mr. Sheffield Eagles totally at the moment. It's Mr. Aston. Mm. And if I've, and if it is if it is the one that he wore, uh, then I'm gonna be blown away. Because if I've got it, if I've got this one, then I'll be uh, I'll stand it. So keep your feathers on the hat. Mr. Powell's is hung up behind me. Mr. Powell's is there. I haven't bought a jersey for your weeks now. I'm I'm getting with Joe Simpsons. I haven't bought any rugby jerseys for ages now. So at least three weeks. Yeah. But anyway, right. What's your first? Right, we'll do this straight away. If anybody wants to join us, we've put the link in the chat room. The link is in the description. If you want to come and join us and say what your greatest games are, you're more than welcome to join in. More than welcome to join in on the fun. We've got room for everybody on Zoom. 
is always the same it is. We will going to be doing that. And can I start off by apologising for the latest injuries? It's not our fault what happened to Thax and to Joel and to Brad Knowles. Just so happened that the only person that's a current member of Sheffield Eagles has not been injured after appearing on Eagles chat is Blake Broadbent. It's got nothing to do with us. I do apologise. <laughs> and just, I've, I was considering, oh, here we go. We've got another one now. Look, here we go. We've got a third one. <laughs> Mr. Fowler, no less. Now, this will be good. Because uh, we've got three of us now. See, this is what I get. This is what I get. I love this Eagles chat. At one point, yeah. I couldn't get more than me just on the show. Now, everybody's coming on it. And this is fantastic. This is it. I mean, this is what it was always like. But I have the fans on. Good evening, Mr. Fowler. How are you, Mr. Mitchell? Hello, Mark. How are you? Evening. Right. right, before we start, I would let Mr. Webster have his first choice. So, yeah, go, on. The... Yeah, right, right away. go on, mate. What's your one? Or because I picked 10 games, I didn't particularly rank them. Um, Just say what's so... what's up your list. Oh, right, okay. Now, obviously, finals and Wembley's and stuff obviously have massive significance. I've kind of gone on the whole entertainment and thrill value when I've done this. Um, so for me, my favourite game in terms of thrills and drama was the 60-40 at Bev, which Chris will remember very well. Yes, indeed, Mark, yeah. Yeah. Um, you, three, yeah. Three, three interceptions, I think we scored that day, did we? Well, I just remember you, uh, we were last minute, we were up by, I think you were 54-40. We were 14 up and you're like, they're going to score and get a bonus point. We're going to blow it. All this hard work. And then uh, I think was it Dave McDonald intercepted, went 80 yeah. meters, and you're just shouting yeah. at the top of your eyes, shove it up your ass, Ben. Never in look, no. Look so like you were look, look like you were running, look like you were running through treacle. That were absolutely after 80 minutes of that to make that interception and go 90 meters were just lunacy. But that's would, that's yeah. probably my favourite game for when you consider everything that we love about watching rugby. That's probably my favourite that one. Very close up there, certainly. Yeah. Go on then, Mr. Fowler, your choice for your yeah, first one. Favourite games, or well, greatest games. The greatest has got, games. It's got to be the 46 all at Eddingley. Oh, yeah. Against yeah. Leeds, when Mark actually scored the last conversion while being concussed. Yeah. Because he scored the last try from a tap penalty, and Ellery only gave him one. <laughs> After all, it was of a line, and he stood up, and I'm thinking, how's he going to kick this? He can't stand up. And luckily, we're in front at post, so he scored. And I think he were concussed. If you ask Mark, he might tell you otherwise. Yeah. But I thought, he, I thought he were. One other as well from quite a long way back were a 20 all at Salford when Warren yeah. Smiles broke his leg, I believe. And we, no, we they was broke, it was broke his leg at, Feathers, at Wakefield when right, we were playing Featherston right. yeah, yeah. just after Christmas. Um, but that 2020 was the we reason 20, we, in... we were We were 20 nil down, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, we and that point saved us in relegation because if we'd have lost that game, we'd have been relegated. Yeah, yeah. So, that, was, so that, that, that point meant the world to us. We stayed up because of that point. So and also the one at uh, the Good Friday at the Chorley game at Olden on the sludge heap that was a right mud bath that I think got us promoted. I think yeah. 1,000 soggy souls. I've never seen been so wet through and danced all my way home. Drunk yeah, yeah. as a skunk in my right. life. With the and the players were even worse. I don't know how they got on because they were drunk as anything them that, that day. Mm -hmm. With the smell of freshly baked bread in your nostrils. And they had all fresh... One thing I remember about all and the sun blessed bakery being next to it. Yeah. They had uh, I think one of the ones I remember is that that day is all the players turned up in these brand new track soaps. They would got all these track soaps made and they all turned up in these flash track soaps and it's been belting it down with rain. And them track suits lasted about five minutes and they went, uh, no, we're taking these off quick. We're, we're soaked to the skin. So yeah. it just went all jackets and everything that day. Track suits, unfortunately, not waterproof. <laughs> well, it was 1989. Yeah. Uh, and it were Sheffield Illegals. Why would you get anything practical? <laughs> uh, yeah, I got the same track suit. I remember mine. But no, uh, the, 40, the, but the 60 40, what Mark said, certainly one in recent yeah. times as well, that uh, absolutely. Uh, and I think one as well that uh, we that won us we won and stayed up around the time of the Challenge Cup era was uh, we played Oldham at Hyde. 
and we won that, and I think that kept us up. Yeah. I might be wrong. I, I might be a bit off mark there, but I'm sure we played them at Ig United Football Ground, and uh, we we beat them, but it was a bit of a scrap. I think one of them for me, one of my my iconic games for me, and I'm going way way back here, is because without this match, I, I think we're not here. Uh, we played Wakefield Trinity in the preliminary round of the in the court in the John Player Cup in 84 yeah. 85. Yes, the winners got played Leeds, trip, at, played Leeds, Leeds at Edinley. Edinley. Mm. If we lost, if we'd lost that game, we not sat here, we'd have gone bust. Yeah, yeah, Gary said it straight away. He says the money from Edinley paid for the season, Keep and he was up, yeah. adamant and he was straight open with that. We'd lost the sponsor, the sponsor had gone bankrupt with the cup, the clouds hadn't come in their droves as what he hoped for. And no. everything was like going against Eagles. Oh, here we go. We're going to be condemned to the history books. And all the players were wondering what, what's going to happen. We got Wakefield. We beat them 196, I think it was. And then we went to Edinley. And the money from that game kept us going for the rest of the season. So I always right. put that game as one of the most important games in Eagles history. Because without we're that, out. where do we're gone? You know, yeah, we're out. Because we're out, we're out of doubt being that early in the uh, making of Sheffield Eagles and certainly they wouldn't have yeah. uh, nothing would have happened we wouldn't have been here you're yeah, right yeah. Paul Paul knows is just putting our chat room he's got the programme I saw it I saw it the other day he's got, he's got the Wakefield programme I saw it yeah yeah, yeah evening Jen oh by the way before we go any further if anybody's thinking on eBay at this moment they said there's a match worn Sheffield Eagles jersey it's a number four and it says it's worn from 1989 1990 it's not it's 91-92. It's an academy jersey. It was nowhere near the first team. It was never even near opposed it because the Eagles never wore this type of jersey with the 13 patches on the sleeve. It, that was an academy jersey. It was never the first team. So if anybody thinks of spending 100 quid on that jersey, please don't. It's a rip-off. He's, he's trying to get more money than he paid. He paid 65 quid for it. I know because he outbid me on Facebook, on uh, eBay for it. Dang. So... Dean, yeah, it says match one. It doesn't say what match. I know, but he's, he's no. advertising it. Like I know that, he so. is. Yeah, yeah. Well, so I'm not well, having it. Yeah, don't no, buy don't it. Do that. Right. So I've done one. Now it's back to Mr. Webster. Hmm. Go on. So number two. Um, in number two, I've gone for the 2012 final against Fev. Uh, for the absolute lunacy of it in terms of we were we were magnificent that day uh one by four and it was largely unexpected after what had happened the year before when we got to the final and they get us a wafting i were expecting to go back are expecting closer but that featherston team were very very good and whilst we were good as well i just didn't think we were going to do it you know and not only that we played out of the skins and got them and the last 15 minutes of that game, I don't know how I survived it, frankly. I nearly had several heart attacks, as well as all the other things I've got wrong with me. So that, that is number two on my on my list, actually. Just pipping, just pipping the Wembley final the other year, just pipping Wembley 19 to the second place. Because Wembley, I think it sounds like a bit of a crass comment to say now, but after about an hour, we were pretty much done in that game. We'd got it won because they were never going to get back to us. But the 2012 final, we hadn't won it until that Hooter went. It was literally all there. So just that just, just, just beats it for me. And, and also, Mark, that game yeah. against Featherston, which I agree completely with you, probably saw the best, in my opinion, one of the top three tries Sheffield Eagles have ever scored. Oh, up the, up the side with yes. uh, Menzi. Yeah, yeah. Menzi and, and, and uh, Scott, getting, Scott putting Q in. Oh, that's yeah. just Phil. That, that try was one. actually... That's got to be one of one of the best I've ever seen us score. Yeah, my two two of my favourite Eagles tries were in that game. They were that one, which were just incredible, and then the one earlier in the game where um, I don't know if you remember it. It comes off the rook from Hendo to um, uh, Simon Brown. Brown puts it to, to Brambani, who literally on the second tackle puts one in the air into the corner. Oh. Missy sees it the entire way. The kick's perfect. The gather's perfect, and he's right he's right there on the line. And it's obviously it was a set piece and, and pre planned, but my God, it was fantastic. Yeah. But, Zach well, David, sorry, sorry, Zach Davis in our chat room saying Wembley was good, Mark, but was it better than Donny at Fev on the road to Wembley? Right. We'll get, don't worry, Zach, we'll get to that. 
that's coming, is it? One of the one of one of my other greatest ones was uh, the Batley final when we beat Batley. To get to Wembley. No, the, no, the fine uh, Premiership uh, champ, the back to back. 2013. 2013. Oh, that was 2013, yeah, yeah. Because if you remember that and all of the memorable, uh, it was a great game, and we were never in front, really, were we? And uh, mm. the uh, one of the greatest memories I've got is uh, Mitch Stringer's ankle tap on Ben Black. Yeah, that was cool. <laughs> yeah, that actually probably won us the game because if he mm. scores that, we're done. Yeah, oh. I didn't actually go for that one because I picked others. But but the problem was we only played half that game. First half we were lousy. No, so, we were we were rubbish. But yeah, I just so, think uh, just really the way the way we came back to be fair yeah. more than anything. Yeah, but true. It weren't as great. It weren't a vintage Eagles like you said, but it were. Uh, we got there in the end, which is yeah. which that, that team had. Bit, yeah. That team had a knack of doing that. They got themselves they out did, of holes, yeah. and but they were yeah. good enough to. Hmm. Well, for start of second half, I remember saying to a few of them, I says, we're in Orly and we've got to get it right. And I says, I'm sure we will. I says, but if we get first try at second half, we'll run over them. And that's what happened. And we did. We, we pulled it round. And um, I, I remember that because um, it, it really were one of that. That team were just, it were almost like they psychologically knew where each other were on pitch. Uh, so they were, good. Um, they were a great interview. We, uh, is it Mark, what's his name? Campbell, centre for Batley. He, uh, he said a few years ago, they were like, they put me up against Menzi and he goes, well, forget it. What are we supposed to do about that? He goes, 80 minutes trying to tackle Menzi area. He goes, I deserved a medal, not for losing or winning, but for that. Yeah. <laughs> some of their players actually, uh, some of their players got banned after that game because they bet on the, the first points of the game being a goal kick by Batley. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was, it was indeed, wasn't it? Yes, it were, yeah, I think three of them, I think three Did of them you? got banned. I think three of them got banned for betting on the fact that the first points of the game would be a penalty goal. Oh dear. By Bartley. <laughs> Dan, I believe that you can't bet on RL at all, never mind your own team. No, I don't think you can. Well, I don't, you can't if you're involved, I don't think. As a player, you can't, no. no. Uh, well, um, I bet on Eagles at Wembley in 98. I know that. I did our back to yeah. Because uh, oh. there was a stupid bookmaker offering odds of 33 to 1 against the Eagles. And I'm like, oh my God, come on. Grab Jason and just said, give us a fiver. And he goes, why? And I went, look at the odds. And he uh, just I went, got... oh God, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we put a fiver on each and then, oh, this was history. I got I got 14s. I wish I'd have seen that 33s. I'd have had a bit of oh, time. But... It was lad bro. It was crazy. I had a bet worse than that. I said, Chris, I had a, I had a bet worse than that a few years ago. Oh. What would that go on? It's well, it's slightly off topic. It's football. Do you remember that year when Liverpool were absolutely garbage under Roy Hodgson and they were like 10 feet table uh, yeah. about Christmas time? Do you uh, remember? Yeah. yeah, yeah, they were playing Man United at Anfield. And I went with you know, Big Jamie, I went to with him to walk about to watch it on Sunday. There was bookies beforehand and um, oh scorecast Torres to score, Fernando Torres to score in a 1 0 Liverpool was something like 50, it was something like something like 15 to 1 or something stupid. So I moved to 10 from it. Anyway, 60 minutes in, Torres, bang, 1-0. And I'm like, oh, God, 150 quid here. I've got this. Board goes up at end of game, three minutes of stoppage time. In fifth minute of stoppage time, Liverpool scored again, 2-0. <laughs> I, 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 I would just lay, I would just lay it up for I would just lay Ouch. it up screaming. 150 oh. quid gone. Oh, um, dear. <laughs> yeah. And I never bet. Yeah. I never betted ever again. So that was that. Oh, no. um, but another just... another game that I uh, another game that I think were one of our best was the semi final before the Wigan game. Salford at heading Salford at Eddingley. Yes. Yeah. I'm again, keeping quiet about that one. Again behind and didn't look like winning, and then managed to get off that line. Oh. I think when Mark's got to look back at his career, I think that performance from Mark on that day has got to be one of his top five. Has to be. Because the way he turned that around in second half, we were dead and buried. And then it was just a couple of little moves he did. And bang, we were, we were away with it. And just uh, fantastic. But I thought I thought it were good at Wembley as well, though, Dean. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just Finally. Just... <laughs> I know he kicked in that, but he, uh, oh. he just got us round field. Yeah. He, oh, he, he, he did it to a T, didn't he? He did that that game plan on that day. It was just to a T. It was just like, right, yeah, kick up Robinson. He's not going to beat Pinkney. Everything was set perfectly that day for that one. Yeah, yeah. No, good. Uh, my second game. Right. Um, right. I'm going back to 
1997, there was a thing called a World Club Challenge. Uh-huh. And every single week, British lads, British clubs were getting their ass kicked. And then this club called Western Reds decided to turn up at Don Valley Stadium and thinking, oh, it's going to be a washover. And then in the last few Perth, minutes of the game, Perth Western Reds. Perth Western Reds. And then Linton Stock goes straight through the middle and scores. And then in the last minutes, our brand new sign in, Marcus Vasilikopoulos. Yes. Deals the ball. Nick Pinkney picks it up and runs under the post. I remember it for the fact that the paint that they used on the pitch just came up all over the players' jerseys. You couldn't wear them jerseys again because the, you couldn't get the paint out of the kit. Uh, the fact that every, it was John Key's first game in charge after Phil Lard had been sacked. Yes, yeah. yeah. And he turned up in a suit which was ill-fitting. And if you watch it on and if you watch it on YouTube, you see this suit that's halfway up his sleeves. And he's like, I don't wear suits. And you never saw John Keir in a suit again unless it was Wembley final. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Oh. One memory I had of that game as well where uh, I think Perth's captain at the time was called John Bell. And yeah. he scored a try. And he spun round behind the post to ground the ball, and, and he went out. over the dead. His feet were yeah. over the dead ball line, and he went over the dead the ball line. The try got disallowed. Yeah, he uh, ran yeah. round to face the pitch, and, and he, he put uh, the ball down. His foot was over the dead ball the line. Pitch, the try yeah. got disallowed. I think we won by four points as well. Yeah, six twenty four, twenty six, twenty two. Like yeah, that. oh yeah, oh. All close anyway. But he did. Uh, he, he ran out. Yeah. In the days of Super League milk, do you remember them days when somebody oh. going round with all the cartons of milk? Oh, no, I don't remember. Someone had a great idea, Super League, to put their names on cartons of milk. And they said, hey, everybody have a free carton of milk. And guess which muggins had the job of handing it all out? Thank you very much. Freddie the Eagle, man. Oh, no, I weren't Freddie then. Oh, I, was you know. Freddie, I was Freddie 98. Freddie 97 was that lad, John Sill. And, oh, but some of the stuff he had to, got to put up with. I remember the best one being Vimto. Vimto at the home games. Everybody got a can of Vimto oh, at one game. I that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I remember oh. winning a case of Vimto on the way to St Helens in Cardiff. Get get all these picture photographs and get if you get fifteen out of fifteen, you win. And I won twenty four cans of Vimto on a very hot day. It went down so nice. A case of Vimto. Uh, yeah, mm. but no, I think that game for me, it was just a fact that you now everybody was writing all the British game, British lads off. Wigan was getting their ass kicked. Uh, Saints were Leeds. Everybody was like, where's this game going to, where's our first win going to come from? And then it came from the most likely places, Don Valley Stadium, Sheffield, and Perth Western Reds or Perth Reds, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And uh, and then we played Hunter Mariners come from Newcastle about five, six days later. And they actually changed their game plan and just completely annihilated us. And uh, this we went... Yeah. We yeah, I've still got the program somewhere. I think I've got a program from them two games somewhere. Um, a guy's asked for it for his museum for Australia, so I've got to send that mu- that program to Australia. So uh, that'll be nice. Sheffield Eagles memento in Australia. You're gonna you're gonna you're gonna sell it? No, no, I've given him because he's putting his, he's got this big he's got his one of these big rugby league museums and he's done it and he just wants something from Sheffield. And uh, he just wanted a sum up in Chef. And I said, well, I've got a program of the World Club Challenge. And he just said, that'd be amazing. So he's going to put that in. But um, another one for me, and this is one for all three of us who remember this. I still think one of the most important games in Sheffield Eagles history, Boxing Day, 1999, when we played Chorley. The rebirth. That were a... Yeah, we're away, yeah. 30th of December, two, 30th of December, 99, uh, Lancashire links at Chorley, wasn't it? Yeah, that's it. I thought it we was Boxing Day, but obviously not. Not, not, not that I've not got incredible recall of anything, but yeah, I remember. <laughs> we had, I we had remember to... the score, was it? 33-20 was the score, was it? Can't remember. We had to play in their kit, though. Yeah. Yeah, blue thing. Yeah, I remember it. I used to, yeah. I used to have it. Um, I, I don't know what I did with it, but I used to actually have that very kit somewhere. Eagles first ever kit. Yeah. But, uh, That's it. I uh, because they had to I, open, they had to open another turnstile. They sold out yeah. pies. Sold out programs. programs. Oh, shocking behaviour. I just remember for months and months. I mean, Chris, you remember it. The meetings we had in Darnell on a Thursday night or whenever we could. Hillsborough Oaks, when we're having them there, having the players Jamie Summerall, Lee Lee, uh, Lee Bettison, Michael Jackson was coming back. We had Johnny Bruce. 
We had all these lads that are just Gary got Strange. In the, yeah. It Chris just, Morley. Yeah. Um, and we had all these lads coming in and we just said, What's chances of us getting in? And he goes, Oh, well, we're gonna do it. And then Bramley folded. And it was like, Well, we're gonna take Bramley's place, but you're not gonna receive any money. You're not gonna yeah. receive any TV money. It was it was just like 84 all over again. The stack cards are stacked against us. We're not yeah, gonna survive. Yeah. Don't worry, you're not gonna get nothing out of it. And I still said Spirit of the Eagles came through that day. If it wasn't for the efforts of Mark, wasn't for the efforts of his dad, Brian. Angela Gregory deserves credit because she was just doing his yeah. crazy. Ted Dowd, Ian, Ian, uh, Anis, Anis, got so, but also, but also, I think, and I always have a soft spot for this club because they've got the casting vote and they voted us in Barra. Yeah, Barra. Barra I had a soft in. spot until summer of Bash, not 2019, when they went after two of our lads and put them on the injured list all season. I know. And I know that we're, I know it, the summer bash, I know, I know, I'll not, uh, you don't forget things like that, but no. without them casting that vote. Yeah, we yeah, exactly. Not, we would not have got in, but I understand what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, I look at it, I mean, that game for me was, meant everything because it meant Sheffield Eagles were still going. It didn't matter what they were doing in Shuddersfield. It didn't give a rat's bum monkeys what they were up to now. We'd got our club back through the efforts of Mark and everything. And I always remember him saying at their meetings, we might not win every game, but we'll be competitive. And, that was, and, and, and that's what I was just going to say, that game, regardless of what the result would have been, they were, they were back, we were back, weren't we? Yeah, we were back. That we were cool. chanting Eagles 2000 on the terraces. We were going crazy. Aye. I've never, yeah, the, yeah. the only time I've seen, there's been two other occasions I remember seeing that many of Eagles fans at an away game. One was Featherston 94 when we took about 1,500 there and we packed out that stand and they Featherston was shocked how many had come. Mm -hmm. And the other one was Cass 89 the week after we beat Widnes for championship and we took over a thousand at Castle for then. That was them, them days were just magical. I don't give a couple, a, of, a couple, couple of occasions where for some reason I don't know why we did. But we always got, I remember the away end at Warrington under that away end being, being packed one year as well. Yeah. And we always had a good support there. And I don't know why, because it weren't exactly on doorstep. But <laughs> we always we always took a lot there. Yeah. Always seemed to go to Warrington. Um, yeah. we, all, we always seemed to take a lot to the traditional grounds like Wigan, Central Park. Even on a Tuesday night at Central Park, booking it down with rain, we took two coaches. So. Yeah. Uh, Oh, God bless old Kev for them court strips. <laughs> oh. well, do you remember Kev? Remember, not not big Kev. There was another Kevin Kevin O'Kane. Kevin O'Kane, that was it. Oh my God! Every single week, right? Bus is booked. I'm used to meet him outside place tunnel after the match and go. Yeah, put me down for next week. Oh. Always some of the things, but uh, no, I think some of the games and everything. Right, Mark, come on in. Let's have another one. So, so third place was uh, Wembley for the 1895 Cup final. You don't need me to explain what's so good about that. Uh, fourth place, I've gone for a game against, well, we've pasted Doncaster quite a lot over the years, and I've picked a couple of them. Um, fourth place on the list is 2011. At the start of that season, I think it was a Northern Rail game. We won 56-12, and it was 40-0 at half time. And it was one of the most sensational performances I've ever seen by an Eagles team. We were just ruthless, brutal, and relentless. Mm -hmm. And it was just at the start of that upward curve of success. Year before, we got to final eliminator against Facts. And then year after, we got to, you know, 2011, we got to final, then 12, we won it. So we were just on, the, just starting the upward curve. I know we shouldn't really talk about curves and stuff at the minute, but we were <laughs> just at the start of that curve uh, of success. And it was one of the best performances I've ever seen. Um, I was watching it just while doing this list the other day. I was watching it back because the, the, the highlights are still on YouTube and some of the stuff we were doing were just magic. Um, so I've gone, for, I've gone for that in fourth place. Right. Oh, God. Uh, it was just that team. That team had everything, didn't they? And that, like you were saying, that was the start of it, really. Yeah. The start of things to come. It sounded like QLT who, Nobody had really heard of. Came over, came over as a standoff. Come over as a six. It was, it was a sensory. It was actually sensory in that game. So obviously we were still uh, figuring out his best players. Yeah, came as a six, and then 
obviously sign Missy and you think, well, uh, fair enough. But again, we had an habit of finding overseas players that yeah. nobody had heard of and turning them into really good players. No, the, Jeff what, Hardy. The, well, the, the, also <laughs> the one Hardy, being yeah. the one being from way back, Sam Panapa. Yeah, yeah. Who came and nobody had finished up at Wigan and won nearly everything with him. Yeah. It was only because uh, we couldn't afford him. He went to Wigan, weren't it? He wanted to come back to Eagles. He wanted. Yeah. He never. He never wanted to play anywhere else. Um, he was one of them from the first year of the Don Valley, uh, 1991, weren't he? Because um, he came back from '84, and then he said, "I'm coming back." And oh, Sam Panapa on the, in the centres was immense. He was a he was a cracking blood. Always loved Sam. One of the yeah, best. One good. of the best ones we've ever had. And then we had another one that year called Des Mayer. <laughs> Big Des, yeah. Big Everybody Des, thought he was a prop, and he went, "Oh no, I play wing." A what? No, he would. And then you just saw you just saw this eighteen stone guy just fly down the wing, and I think it's on YouTube against all Kingston Rovers. He's got about four guys hanging off him, and he's just running, just hanging them off. We just palming him off, and he's got four four whole KR guys on him. <laughs> I, think so, that, um, I think that's the same game when uh, I'm not sure who it is, Paul Carr, but somebody was out of position, scores for us, and the last man they run over to go over the try line is Bright Sodje. They absolutely flattened him. <laughs> Bright went on. Bright went on wing for them. He just ran straight off at top for him. I think it was Paul. It might have been Paul Carr. Yeah, might be wrong, but no. I remember Bright laying there thinking, "Fuck, what's happened here?" Just somebody <laughs> just flattened him on, like Jonah Loma with England rugby union side. It was yeah. a bit like that. Yeah. He just got yeah. laid out. Been some. I think some matches against Donny always be some of the great ones. I think, like you said, if, you know I mean, so the one that when we got the last minute winner when we were playing them and uh, Featherston in, in the 85 Cup, 1895 oh, Cup. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you look back and some of the things we've had against them, it's always been, there have been some classic games. Um, I think one of my favourite against Donny is, uh, we had a pre-season friendly at Olden Stadium. They just announced to reopen Olden Stadium. And we played them in a pre-season friendly. We had all our big guns out and Donny Tanders. The they South, put, York, the South, South Yorkshire Cup. And they they put us to bed. They killed us. I think it was Bill Gardner's first game. Right. And, oh my God! L Eagles fans were going. We we're going. What's happening here? We don't lose to Donny, and Donny were thrown cloud nine. They thought it was the best thing they've ever seen. But oh, it was embarrassing. But we put it right the following week when we played Salford. We kicked their backside for them big style at Salford. Gary Jack's first game as Salford manager, All the right. Salford coach, and he took Howard with him. Ah, uh, yeah. One of another one that's just sprung to mind for uh, me was a, uh, and he got he scored two on his debut uh, at St. Helens, David Frace. Oh, when we won it, when we won at Saints, he scored two. On, I think he scored two that day yeah. on his debut, despite the yeah. fact he couldn't speak a word of English. He just kept gaining ball and he kept running away. Yeah, I remember the saying with David Frace. It was I can't say it because it's a four letter word, but it came from David Plange. And I know that it was like pass me the ball, Frazee. Yeah. Never only saying it's the only sense we've ever had that never gave the ball to a winger. And no. David Plange is not that person that you want to be off. No, and he no. did it every every week. It was like, uh, give it to Plange. To... And he's going, Give me the when... ball, will you? David Fraser used to score and all team had run towards him. And David Plange just walk the other way, going, Yeah, greedy so and so. Where's my uh, bonus? <laughs> <laughs> Um, he tried scoring bonus. He did. He, he did that. It's already so a dummy as though he was going to pass and Plangey and set off, and he just run the other way under the <laughs> Plangey and oh. chase after him. No, I think one of my favourites is it was my second ever away game, and we'd been tanned by St. Helens a week before Illsbury in our first division debut of '89, and we went to Featherston, and Featherston thought, "Oh, they've got this in the bag." We've come up, we're promoted. We ain't got a chance in hell. And we trounced them. We murdered them. 37-12. And the day, that day, David Michael came of his own. The 17-year-old kid we signed from Crickleston. He signed as a standoff. Soon converted him to fullback. Huh, there you go. There's your history. Uh, we'll go even further back with Mark Ganson signed as a scrum off and ended up at fullback. Scrum off? You can't imagine now. <laughs> and uh, yeah. I think the Featherstone one, it was just one of them things where everything we did just went, just clicked that day. 
uh, Gary Van Bellen, Paul Broadbent, Mickey, Mick Cookie, uh, Sonny Nickel. Uh, I would obviously his player was, oh no, Bruce Maguire still hasn't arrived yet. So it was Nick Grimolby or Nick Alafihi or Mark Fleming, one of them guys, and Dandy Dickinson, uh. and all, all these lads that come up from second division. And they thought they would they trained so well to get them going. And then that game against Featherson, it just clicked and everything just went mental. He's got the best bloody commentary I've ever heard on any Eagles video, which will remain nameless because in this day and age, it is very non-PC. <laughs> uh, but the, the the journey there for me and the journey back was just wonderful. Just to see all the Eagles fans and we were going crazy. And that will always be one of my favorite, greatest games for me ever. Always be one of them. So the, so the eighteen ninety five Cup this year, are we Fever or are we York? I'm York, personally. I don't, I don't particularly have any great love for either, but I'd sooner York over Fev. Mm. I wouldn't. Uh, oh, if somebody said to me, there's a thousand pound there for you to shout for Featherston, I'd tell them to keep the money. Yeah. I yeah. would never, ever shout for Featherston at anything, yeah. even if it <laughs> were a tid, even if it were a Tidley Winks competition. Yeah. Right. As a break from the greatest games things. Right, over the, since we've been on and we haven't had a chance, ex Featherson player banned 10 man, ex Eagles player banned 10 games for what he did with Rob. Yeah. Fair enough. That's it. Has he apologised yet? I haven't uh, seen anything. No. No, I, I didn't apologise, but I think he uh, went something along the lines of. It, I was know a it's jo- a- it was a joke, and then. Yeah. It was a joke, and I know the player involved, which obviously he does. And I think that was his way of trying to apologise. Mm. Has Featherston ever said a statement about it? Because I don't think they have. Of course they haven't. You can't no, rely. but again, but again, that's one of the reasons, Dean, because they're just classless. Yeah. The statements, they always they have have been... the statements Featherston have put out about various subjects look like they've been written by a four-year-old. So, I mean, no. Yeah, he's lost his crayons. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, at Featherston, just when you go there as well, they just, uh, the, that's the first real time I went to a rugby league game and experienced racism. Yeah. And told the steward, and the steward went, if you don't like it, go and stand somewhere yeah, else. else. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, thanks for that, mate. Cheers. Yeah. And I yeah. just, it's not a, uh... see, I don't know whether I want them to go, I don't know whether I want them to win league and go up. So they get tonks every week. I don't know if I want them to miss out in last minute to not go up so they'd be heartbroke or whether I just want them to go under. <laughs> Can't you wish all three? <laughs> but then you'd be right. Go, and then at least perhaps, one of them, you'd be right. Go, go up to Super League and then go under. But no, I just, it's just nothing that I have yeah. not. And to be fair, I know, I know there's a John Davis is it there, but I, I think I always had a soft spot for 40 as well. I think what he's done at York's been great. Yeah. He's done a really good job, but it just shows you they've uh, they've now got that base which we're getting. Yeah. They've got the crowds coming back. All right, they've spent a few quid, but that comes with getting settled and getting a settled base and getting more money in, which is what we're looking forward to doing. Yeah, yeah. And doesn't it look great? Stadium. I look forward to Stadium Saturdays now so much. Look when you see that when you see the when you see it actually coming on now and you're like, going, oh look look the foundations are there. It's coming on, so I'll get, I'll get excited when I start seeing an erection. <laughs> I mean a steel one, by the way. I mean a steel one, by the way. A, a large steel one. Uh, I think um, when we look at this season, I think Mark, what's it been like being back at the Eagles games then? Uh, it's been incredible, mate. Now. You can argue that the quality of the games has been a bit naff. Well, whatever, you know, we, we, we know where we are. But just to see people again, just to see the boys again, and just to have that experience of knowing that you're there for them, that's made it for me. And I look forward to it immensely. Now, I couldn't go to witness for because it's Father's Day and obviously, you know, Harry would never allowed it. Um, but I've been to all the others since. I went to Oldham. Uh, slash Staley Bridge and first away game since I tell you what Bradford at Dewsbury last year when we got us clocks clean first away game since nice drive over hills parked up drink before game game we won 
it was great. You know, it was just such a joy to to actually be able to do that again and to see all the faces of people that you've not seen in a long time and you think, mm. I'm glad you're all right. You know, I'm glad we're all we're all still able to do this. Um, yeah, and I long for the day when you know these nonsense restrictions get eased and we can all, uh, you know, we can all go rather than capacities and strictness and all that stuff because there's going to be some away games where we'll only have limited, you know, tickets and whatnot. Um, rather than just turn up and pay, you know. For me, that's the beauty of the game. You turn up, you pay, you go in, you stand somewhere, you talk to people, you shout, you scream, and you go home if you've won or lost. That's an away day, and that's what rugby's about. And I, whilst it's brilliant to be back, I look forward to the days we can do that. But I will say, Summer, the way that the club have run match days at Donne and making it all right for everyone to get there, you know, giving you your seats, making it clear what you're, what you're supposed to do, everybody's been great and well done to the club on doing it because, you know, I know from obviously Liam's a mate, I know that the effort that's gone into making it so that we can all go again and thank you everybody involved at the club so that we can do it. Yeah, well done, Mark. I've not actually uh, had a chance to get down yet, but I'm hoping to get down at least a couple of times are before I end it. Are you allowed to leave Scotland under Kimmel Sturgeon's rules? Uh, providing I wear those glasses and the big false nose, and no, I am. Yeah, I am now. I'm allowed. To. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, what you mean? Uh, what you mean? It looks like I've already got a false nose. There's no need for no that. Said anything, Chris? No, <laughs> no, but I'm allowed to. So I'm hoping to get. I'm hoping to get down for a couple of. Uh, don't. Why losers won't stop me when it's first game yeah. at New Stadium? I'll be. Yeah. I'll, I'll walk it there oh. if I have to. Oh, mm. and join me. I'm walking it. I'll walk it from yeah. Cambridge. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I'm hoping at least to, at least to at least a couple of games this year. I'm hoping to get to. I was disappointed that Barra went down because I, I did Barra last year, mm. about three hours from here, but uh, and we won it last minute. But uh, I was disappointed they went down, and I'm I'm also disappointed that we're not playing we're not playing Whitehaven away for some reason. Um, I think it's to do with the fact that we can't fit all the fixtures yeah, in. Yeah. But there yeah. is some we're missing. Um, I think we're not we're not playing to lose away either, are we? Match, I don't think anybody is. But no. um I no, know that's but... what we're not doing. Whitehaven and Toulouse, I know we're not mm. playing away. And I think yeah. we're just Whitehaven. Is... I was looking forward to going to Whitehaven. I thought, oh, I could make a weekend of that, but that got kicked Did in there... obviously. But... Anybody see the report on the Eagles supporters page that said well, we're only two points off the playoffs? And then it was like, hold on, I don't think somebody realises it's percentages this year, not, yeah, not yeah. points. <laughs> uh, two points off playoffs, yeah. Uh, but um I see, I mean, when we look above us in Super League at the moment, I mean, I know to cast are playing Catalan tonight. This, I see the excuses are starting to come out now from a certain area of Lancashire called Lee, saying, oh, but we are trying really hard, but the results aren't coming our way, but we are trying really, really hard. They got put into Super League at literally very little notice. So you, you, the results are to be expected. I think that they seem to have got the impression that they were supposed to go in there and tear it up. That were never going to happen, mate. That were never going to happen. No. And in a way, I were delighted they put Lee in Super League so that we don't have to go there and endure them. And I'm enjoying it even more, the fact that they're going to finish bottom with no wins. I'm enjoying that even more. Uh, I think I think what's going to happen is... Uh... Is Lee going to say, oh, we're, we're applying for bankruptcy, we're going to have to release all the players, we're going to have to uh, file for part-time, we're going to have to go back to part-time status. You can see it all coming a mile off because it's what yeah. Bolton does. It just, every time that Lee gets in, super, in first division, it even goes back to when me and Chris, I mean, in the 80s and 90s, every time Lee have been in the top division, Every time, they single time they've been relegated, they've pleaded bankruptcy, they've pleaded poverty, they've got to restart all over again, we've got no money, there's nobody, and all like that. Every single time, at some point, somebody's got to turn around, but we are talking about rugby league and him. And yeah. look... Enough is enough, and you can't... Time. They should have never put him, been put in Super League. Never. I know I don't. I know what it meant us going there. But there's a, there were a couple of other clubs that deserved to go out, but at least a crack at Super League. And no matter how much we hated them, Featherston deserved that crack because they finished runners up. So they deserved that one crack to have a go at Super League at least. That's probably so, yeah. But, but l l why give it to. Oh, they don't deserve it. Beaumont's just a waste of space. He just spouts his gob off every two seconds he gets a chance. And he just winds me up completely. 
I mean, it's, it's, the RFL have got this absolutely raging erection for Lee Sports Village as well, and oh. I don't understand it. Every single chance they can play an international or a special game, they, they do, and I don't get it. Yes, it's a nice ground. It's in the middle of nowhere. Unless you've got a car, you can't get to it, and it's expensive. I don't get the obsession. Same as anyway. Um, but, you know, I, I, personal choice, I would have put London back in, you know, because I thought they were the best team outside Super League, best infrastructure, best chance of progression. You know, I, I would have done that myself. But, you know. Do you think, do you think, they, did it purely, do you think they did it purely and simply on attendances? It, well, I don't see why, because for at least the first half of the year, there were going to be no crowds. So I don't really understand well, that logic. Yeah, true. Well, yeah, course, yeah, yeah. yeah, I see your point, but, but yeah. for me... It, it shouldn't be about that, but it always ends up being about it, doesn't it? I'll tell you what it is. It's in the M62 corridor. And, of course, yeah. we, we all know everybody, you know, God loves the M62 you think, corridor, uh, Yeah. I know this sounds great. Do you think Bournemouth has budgeted for, an, for, a, for the, the club to have a win bonus at some point this year? Or he's not I budgeted really for the so. fact that they'll lose every single game and they'll have to pay it? I do hope so. Yeah. Maybe. So, uh, It'd be comical. Wait, where, do we, where, do we, where do we where do we get to on us top ten games? I've got fifteen minutes of this left, and I've got to go up and play touch rugby. Uh, where, where do we get to anyway? <laughs> uh, we've got I, you got you got up to Doncaster. You got a Doncaster. Yeah. yeah. All right. So I'll, what's I'll, your next I'll one? Through, I'll go through the rest of mine because uh, I said okay, come on. You can carry on all day. Uh, in fifth, I've got uh, the first trip to Toulouse in two thousand nine, which I was of course at. Um, last minute winner under the sticks from um, Ashley Thackeray. Um, basically, we we got we, we, we snow on the ground on the Thursday, and we flew out to Toulouse on the Friday from Bristol of all places. Um, and dipstick here, thinking, oh yeah, first week of March, it's going to be freezing. Took me jumper, me jeans. Yeah, got there, twenty nine Celsius. I nearly freaking died. I had to go and buy a pair of shorts, and I don't wear shorts very often, as you all know. Thank God. Um, <laughs> and the game was just crazy. It was at six o'clock at night and it was still about 25 Celsius. And we'd been out of beer all day, so we were flagging a little bit. Um, the game were really touchy. It was 12 apiece with 10 minutes left and about 10 different drop goal attempts all got missed. And then literally on the hooter, um, I forget that. I think it was Cookie was hooker then, Craig Cook. He put it out to uh, Riparte, who made a half break up the right-hand side. And we're all thinking, far as you can, mate, far as you can. And literally out of nowhere in the middle is Ashton Beckley, the winger. The party puts him in, under the sticks, horn goes, win, absolute insanity. We all went berserk, <laughs> hang to the air and the lot. I've never known I don't like it. In the last minute, first trip to France and we won. Mm. And the fans were like, uh, what's, what's is this? What's is this that's just happened? And, yeah. um, that were good. Um, Zach, youth, um, in sixth place for me, Doncaster quarterfinal at Feb. Now, it wasn't a great game, this, because for uh, 60 minutes of it, we were absolutely crap. And I say crap politely. Um, frankly, I still don't know. I can sit here and live to be a million years old, and I don't know how we won that game because we were awful. Um, with, with, with 20 minutes left, we just started pegging it back. And it last minute, we, we nobody knew how much time they were left because they don't have clocks in Featherstone. And, um, and and we got a scrum on our 20. And youth said to me, this has got to go, and this has got to go now. And and it went, and we were over in the last minute. And again, put ball down, on when, and we'd won. And we'd got, and that was it. That senior jumped on me, and he just said to me, that's it. We're going to Wembley. This is it. We've got it. We've got it. And, uh, hey, you've got a guest. What was it? And, um... We've got a guest. Yay! Hello, hello. Hello, Harry. Oh, hello, oh, sunshine. Yay. And, um... <laughs> oh, and he's off. And, um, so that's number five, number six. Number seven, um, the semi-final against Batley, the very next game, um, pure team performance because the nerves in the run-up to that game were just incredible. You know, everybody was on edge, the players, the fans. I was actually with... I was actually with uh, Matty James and Ollie Davis when the draw was made. Yes, we can have a drink. I was actually with uh, with M2 when the draw was made. And when it came out, Batley at home, they were like, yes, yes, we're going to win. And I'm like, shut up, shut up. You've got to win the game. You've got to win the game. I said, it's all right. You're going like that, but you've got to win it. And and we won it. And um, I want to remember about that game. Yeah. Just drop it. Oh, 
all I remember about that game is that I was stinking ill. I'd been I'd been laid up with a bug all week, hospital and what nasty. Not COVID, by the way, it's in pre-COVID. But mm. I'd been laid up for a week, um, really bad. And I was at that game and literally I just looked like a ghost. And um and we just stood there with a pipe while the game was going on on by this thing's happening, this thing's happening, I don't <laughs> feel good. And I, I had to sit down at grass banking, but we won. Yeah. And uh, that was an important thing. Yeah. Uh, eighth place for me, um, this is going back a bit, 2009, when we had a really good side, um, we had to, we played Doncaster away in the league, and that was the year when they actually finished on minus points, if anyone remembers. They finished on minus one points. They won one game all season at Don Valley. Uh, but we played them away in June, but Keatmo wasn't available, so it was at Fev. And we won 78 points to eight, and it was an absolute massacre, and it was beautiful, because there were literally 100 of their fans there, and they all left at half time because we just dated them. But really solid performance. Ninth place, Doncaster again. The first game at the keep move, the day after yep. Boxing Day, when they'd hired, I tell you, they'd got the trophy. The South Yorkshire trophy was there to be presented to them at the end of the game. They'd paid for a little presentation stand that was going to be put on the pitch. They'd got the photos. They were doing all that. <laughs> and, we beat them. and none of that happened. And funnily enough, none of that happened. And I remember Ian Swire telling me he had to go over to John Wright and say, excuse me, uh, you know that trophy that you were going to present? Do you mind if we have it, seeing as we won the game? <laughs> and um, apparently Johnny would not allow the trophy presentation after the game because it would have been bad optics for their new stadium. But oh. I'll never, ever forget that. They, they, they publicised it, they pushed it, and they were saying, great event, first game at the new stadium, and we turned them all, and it was just glorious. And... I don't remember a great deal about the game. I know we played well, but just the whole circumstance. Mm. And number 10 on my list, again, going back a little bit, um, 2007 Challenge Cup, we got Dewsbury away. They just pipped us to league title a year before in League Two. We'd both come up to League One. We'd won the playoff and they'd won the league. We got them away in the Challenge Cup and we beat them. I think it was 47-32. They had a man sent off and we were just fantastic. It was for me, it was when we'd... I thought we were going to go up in 2007 where we were going to really struggle because to that point, no one had gone up. Since they restructured the leagues in 2004 or whatever it were, three, no team had gone up from two to one and survived. They'd all come straight back down. Yeah. And I was expecting the same for us. What a mistake. We went up, we played them away in cup, we won, we pasted them and we'd arrived. Eagles had arrived in the championship and we've been there ever since. Yeah. Landmark game in the history of the club for me, that other new club, you know, post-manager. Yeah, yeah. That, that yeah. was the game where we turned from a team that had gone up into a championship team. Was that the year when uh, we lost in quarterfinals to London at Don Valley? No, that was much later. That was... That later on, that was when Jamie, Jamie Soward played for London, didn't he? They only signed him for about three games to get him to Wembley and they beat us. We had a try this allowed in... Uh, from Scotland. They yeah, they're not wrong with it. No, I know they weren't, and they said after that they were not wrong with it. And had that try of being allowed, we'd have won. Probably. I mean, we that London game were very weird. We'd really built a sense up for it, and then yeah, yeah. I think we froze in headlights a little bit, and by the time we'd settled, it had gone. But uh, Soward were man of match, obviously. And then they got going to wait next round in semis, and we're going to absolutely flatten them. So. Well, they I remember uh, Radio Sheffield doing a live studio broadcast. I was in the audience that night in, in, the, in the studio at Radio Sheffield. And I said, oh, we'll win, we'll win. And obviously we didn't. But... Yeah. You and your <laughs> oh. been any, any, uh, any opinions on that lot, Dino? No, mate, no. Because literally in them days, I was just all over the show with rugby. I was trying to get... Uh, I was involved with the rugby league, rugby league down here and uh, mm. and Eagles and everything. Some funny enough, some have popped up on my timeline today. Eleven years ago today, James James Swear James or oh, James Whaling, uh, James Whaling's dad, popped down and picked up a kit from my house. I get I donated to her the uh, kits for Cummels campaign for Menzi. Oh, it just yeah. popped up eleven years ago today. I was like, "Wow, is it that long ago?" Uh, this this big kit that said St Ives Roosters on it. We just they just donated it. It was fantastic. It ca it came upon my memories today. It's eleven years ago today or yesterday when I was on hospital radio with Terry when we did the hospital radio broadcast at Don Valley. Oh, um, come up on mine as well, yeah. 
Yeah, Terry was Terry was the Martin Terry was the Martin Tyler, the voice of reason, and I was the Jim Ross, the Murray Walker, the uh, the excitement. <laughs> and I can't yeah. remember who we were playing, and I should remember because my memory's good. But yeah. I think it might have been Lee. He might have been Lee. And um, they they put that dummy off. That dummy off just dropped ball and then picked it back up and chucked it, and no one saw it. Mm. Everybody saw it apart from referee. And I just shouted at the top of my voice, he's dropped it, he's dropped it, you bellend. Forgetting that I was completely live to anybody in hospital who was listening to it. <laughs> so, um... Well, Matt, well, you, were, you, you, were, uh, you were the forerunner to Ivan Brackenborough. Yeah. Hospital, hospital radio. <laughs> you, oh, you modeled, God. Apparently, apparently <laughs> Ivan Brackenbury modelled himself on you, Mark. I've been back at my funny story. I saw him. I saw him years ago at City Hall. Um, yeah. me and the <laughs> missus went to, um, we went to one of those comedy nights on a Saturday night. And he was he's on, on before, He's on this Saturday actually at, at Barnsley. Yeah. He was he was on and it was absolutely side splittingly hilarious. We our oh, our our Christie was so good. Because he, he knew got, when he were novel. And um yeah, yeah, he, got, yeah. he got sack he got he got sack at Alam FM. <laughs> Obviously, Tom, Tom, uh, his real name is Tom, Tom Bins. That's his real name. Tom Bins, yeah. Tom Bins, and he got sacked at, uh, he got sacked at Alam FM because uh, he was broadcasting on Christmas Day and he did the Queen's speech live. And then he says, from one Queen to another, and he played an Elton John song. Oh. <laughs> and he got sacked for it. Well, he sacked him. Yeah, well, yeah, but even uh, that were like, God knows how long ago, but yeah, yeah. But, uh, Mark, Mark yeah, Webster, think... Ivan Brackenborough. Yeah. Yeah. I think we've got to one come up with... Thing, Dino, one last thing, Dino, before I've got to shoot off. Now, one. obviously, I wasn't around pre-merger particularly. I went in 99 at the end of 98. I have yeah. watched as many games as I can find of the original Eagles from the 90s. And my, one of my favourite games from that era, this may surprise you, is the quarterfinal against Cass at Weldon Road when um, Senior smacked Barry John Mather. I've watched wow. that game back, and I think that is a brilliant, brilliant performance because the BBC were absolutely Johnson in hand about Castleford that oh, year. Castleford's arse, yeah, they were. They were yeah. going to win it, they were going to do this, they were going to Wembley, this, that, and the other. And we didn't even get a we, we didn't even get a sniff in pre-game. They were sort of like, oh yeah, they played Sheffield and it's quarter final and uh, and we beat them. And not only did we beat them, we were excellent. And yeah. that showed how good that team was on that day because that team in 98, 99 was a really, really good side. Didn't reach the heights it maybe could have, but that day showed what they were so capable of and just what a crap <laughs> team it was before we went to Leeds. Because yeah. You talk to a lot of rugby fans, elite fans, about Keith Senior, and they just go on about Leeds and Leeds and Leeds. But yeah, they forget yeah. that we actually made him the player he was. From Huddersfield Rugby Union, Huddersfield YMCA yeah, Rugby YMCA, Union. YMCA, yeah. yeah. But, uh, that you game go. you're on about at Cass, Mark, when mm. we, I remember, I can't remember who I was with, but when we came out of Weldon Road that day, that's when I said, we'll win it. I said, because if we can overcome that adversity and, and win there, I said, we'll win this this year. Yeah. At no point did yeah. I ever say would win it. I never said because oh, wow. I was so superstitious. I, I was just, I was just going crazy. I just remember saying, then, not saying a word about it. Every day as it comes, I, I'm not going to say. It. I'm not going to go. Oh, yeah, we're going to do this. Never. And then and then obviously at half time at Eddingley, it were on me things you'd never wish you'd said list. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> well, like yeah. fuck. But but yeah. But I just thought if we can, we overcoming that the way we played with twelve men. I thought. We'll win this now. Yeah. We just, I just thought we got. Well, we didn't get lucky because we deserved to win. If but... senior had been sent off, it'd have been different. I always yeah, say, yeah. if senior Don't had gone off, he scored two after that, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. So I always, yeah, I got it in my head. I've spoken to somebody about this before, and I got it in my head. He got sent off, and he didn't, did he? Because he no, ended up getting he winning try, didn't he? No, yeah, he, he got put on report. He got put on report, and then got banned for semi. That's what he did. Yeah, I did. When, uh, I did get yeah, because Bright played it semi, didn't Bright same playing. So yeah, Bright was the saviour of the referee at the end of the yeah, game. Right, yeah, when the when those Salford supporters oh, ran yeah. to attack Stuart Cummins. Yeah. Man City. Yeah. What a name Cummins, eh? Even then, what a name people no, was attacking yeah, people for Cummins. Yeah, yeah. What what did we know then? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dean, are you Dean, are you are you talking into a halogen heater there? 
No, why? It just look, your, your microphone looks like it's a halogen heater. You look, it looks like you're cold. This is this is my this it's is like, one this is my baby like that cost me off. about 110 quid. Do you mind? It's like some of the Thunderbirds, mate. You know. Oh, well, <laughs> I only have to press that and it mutes. So little look when it went. Watch well, the light will go out. That's it. So it just. I could just go commute it just by pressing it and the light goes out. It's fantastic bit just, of kit. Just do it. Just do it again. Well, it's you know, amazing. Great, lads. I'm going to have the chips. I'm going to get All right, Mark. Tap All right, mate. You'll see you soon. Take Thank care, you, mate. Always. Enjoy. See you later, uh, everyone. Bye-bye, mate. Bye. 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 Right. Come on, then. Right. So if anybody wants to join us, the link is in the description. If you want to come on and tell what your greatest games in Sheffield Eagles history, you're more than welcome to come on and join us and have some fun and games and memories. Halifax, Halifax at, Halifax at uh, Thrum Hall. I remember Carl them Briggs, days. Carl Briggs kicked a drop goal that went under the posts and Colin Morris gave it. And it won us, <laughs> it won, it won, it won, Colin Morris won us field and it won us the game. It went underneath the posts. One of my greatest ones I remember, um, the greatest games one of me, is uh, his first game at Don Valley. Because we didn't know what to expect. We just, we just, we were just pleased no. that we'd got a stadium in Sheffield, and we turned out that day, and the crowd of Sheffield, often most of the people got in for nothing because there were no turnstiles because it was still being built. So <laughs> a lot of people got in for nothing, and uh, I remember turning up with my girlfriend at the time, and uh, I'm full Eagles, everything like that, watching it. Uh, David Topless complained about it because the, the the PA system was being broadcasted into the dressing rooms at the time, so we couldn't do a team talk because they were doing, the PA system was uh, going over the thing, and he's going, "I can't, I can't, somebody turn this bloody thing off!" And it was the first game there. There were a lot of problems. I remember Richard Pickersley winning the two hundred meter two hundred meter dash or a four hundred meter uh, dash around the right. pitch. Um. It was it was a wonderful occasion. I wait for you there. And then um, it just seemed as though like this sounds as though now I remember saying when we were in there, oh we'll get we'll get some international games now, and then we got Australia in '92, uh, and then Aussies in '94. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, oh, no, some wonderful uh... memories of that place. I mean, Don Valley. Yeah. Okay, I'll give it to you. Twenty-five thousand seater. Yeah. It, was, it was ahead of its time. Yes, the running track was round it. We took the we took the stick because it's all you need binoculars yeah, uh, and everything. The but, floodlights, the floodlights at the time were ten times brighter than Wembley. Yeah. If you remember, they never used to have the full pylons well, on because you saw the middle section yeah. on. Yeah, and uh, and then they failed against Leeds. Yeah, well, <laughs> when, when we were in front, when we were winning. Yeah. Um, we've got to talk about it. The greatest, one of the great math, one of my greatest games is May the second, nineteen ninety eight. It has to be because that was the day that the I whole think... rugby league world just went, "Wow, we, why, why have we said that Wigan only had to show up? Why did we say uh... that Wigan could only have to polish the medals? They can start polishing the medals. Anything that could to put an Eagles play, Eagles fan, and Eagles player up their backside that day showed it. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's probably. It my best ever because that was and I know we've won trophies since but that we won a trophy at the highest level yeah and I know we've won the premierships from uh, in the championship and we've done back to back and we won the 1895 cup but that mm. for me because we were in super league we were mm. playing at the highest level the challenge cup is the the prestigious the most prestigious one you can win and for me, that will always be, obviously, the semi-final, because without that, you don't get there. Yeah. But the final, for me, has got to be, as Brian Clough says, it might, or oh, whatever he said, I can't remember. Oh, it's not the best game I've ever seen, but it's in the top, <laughs> but it's in the top one. Yeah. That's yeah. It. yeah. I think it was a whole cup run. It was this belief that, I mean, I was fortunate enough to be working day to day, yeah, yeah. seeing it and everything. And John, John got this new, this new belief inside of him. And we played Lee, and it was like, yeah, okay, we hammered Lee because they were part time, we were full time. We put them to bed. 
Right. Then we drew. Then we drew the am amateurs Egremont Rangers at home, and it was like, okay, if we don't, if we score less than seventy points, it'll be a disaster. And then we put eighty uh, past them. Uh, uh, I've got memories of that day for, for, for different reasons. <laughs> yeah, how to who, who presented the uh, this poor woman won the halftime draw, and she was expecting somebody flash from Sheffield Eagles or somebody she could have a photograph. Who did she get? Freddie the Eagle. <laughs> there you go. And I'm like, oh, there, look, there we go. There he goes. The, the, one and, the one and only. The one and only. And the quarterfinal, it was starting. It was like, we've never been in quarterfinals before. This is new. And we were on the telly as well. And it was like, uh, hey, we're on, we're on Grand Scandi. BBC, I you know, yeah. Yeah, and then the semi came up. Then everything that happened with the semi. And, oh, but that day, I think I woke up early. I had my breakfast. Uh, everybody at the hotel was getting ready into the Wembley suit, so I wouldn't wear mine. Uh, I, I said, there's no way I'm wearing a suit when I've worn the same gear in every round of the bloody cup here. So in all the posh section of Wembley, with the, when I mean the posh section, it was a plastic seat with nothing on the back of it. It was just, that was it. Everybody's in the Wembley suits, and there's me there with Pepsi shirts and with Mitchell 69 on the back. So that was me, uh, and everyone's going... You could have got dressed up, Dean. I said, hey, I've worn this in every round. There is no way I'm not wearing this today. And so, but... Superstitions. Superstitions was going mental them days. Huh? I've never seen so many people doing superstitious things. Even the supporters, they was all doing their superstitions. Going, but I've done this in all rounds of the cup and everything. And oh, it was just the whole thing people for do. everybody. But people do it. But no, it was... Uh... The game plan was just done to a T. It was like... We're going to put Robinson under pressure. Pinkney and Fettel tell what well, the games of their lives. Uh, yeah, just well, all, we, all of them did. We got into them as well. I thought was Sever Tabo were good that day as well. Yeah, I'll give Rocky Turner his due. I mean, to this day, and I don't care but how many times Eagle fans will watch it, how he got that ball over that try line for that last try, I will never, ever know. Double movement. I've asked him. I've asked Double him. Double movement. He grounded the ball, with, and I've, I'll take that to my grave. Ball, <laughs> his, his elbow's gone to the ground, and he's put the ball down. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, I, I don't think, care. I'll take it. I, I didn't care. I mean, the big big mites of rugby balls in them days. Don't get these little things like, look like blue suppositories these days now. You have the <laughs> big mitre ones and all these, like, get in there, proper rugby balls out. So, it, uh, makes you, it makes you wonder, had we not had Dean Gold touch judges, whether that would get given. Because if you remember Cummins, uh, but it Cummins in final, or whatever it were in final, I had to come round yeah. from the yeah, side no. and the in goal touch judge nodded his head and went yes and he gave yeah. it. And we are the in goal judge, I don't think we'd have got that try. No, no. But, but, but I think the one memory I've got is them lining up to come out on the pitch and you looked at Wigan and they. And then mm. you looked across and you see Beans and you see John A. 98, 98, 98, 98. And they're bouncing. Yeah. And, and the Wigan players are like, what? That's what? And Eagles players are bouncing. They're smiling. They're looking straight ahead. And I'm going, yeah. we got this. If I'd have, if I, my dad said when he was watching it, he says, you could have never known who were the favourites. He said, because no. if you were a neutral, you wouldn't. He said, if you'd have looked at that and said, who's favourites, it'd have been Sheffield lads. He said, straight away. Yeah, they, they, and they played like their lives depended on it, and they got nothing to lose. If they get hammered, yeah. they just said, everybody just said, well, it's Wigan again, isn't it? Yeah. But, but oh, what yeah. a thing. But, they'll be, be but they'll, uh, with new stadium coming, there'll be plenty more memories. <laughs> yeah, it's finally happening. It's, I think when we, look the back the, when we look back over the 37 years of the Eagles, we've been, we've done, we've done work like from the first season. We've done from the grand finals of up to the days. We've done the nineties. Um, I think one of the funs I've been, well, one of the, I mean, I'm we're going to do a top ten funniest moments. We've got to do a top ten funniest because there's always something. I I have a roll party shorts when revealed his green underpants and he went to score oh. a try in his underpants at London. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have a roll party's reaction. The famous streak of the on the, to, the, the, the Iber party reaction to me at Featherstone. Yeah, I remember that the streaker against Oldham. Oldham, yeah. Who got That's on the, the front? Got on the front of the Sheffield Star for that. The best of one of that is when she ran up, to, and I'm going to put this now. The funniest bit of that is when we watched it back at the office a couple of days later. 
she ran from the sidelines. She went straight up to this poor kit man who had his hands full, and she's going, "What do you think?" And he's going, <laughs> and his hand, Ed, was straight, <laughs> straight up going, <laughs> trying not to look. He's went, "I'm not looking. I'm not looking. I swear uh, to God, I'm not looking." <laughs> oh, but I mean, when we look back and everything like that, it's the greatest games have always been fun. Always great. I mean, obviously, Perth Reds will always be one of them. Yeah, um, first reds, I, I the best ones. Man. I always think the best games we had is when our back's been against the wall, where oh, yeah. nobody's nobody's give us a chance, and it's like, oh, you're not gonna. The only time we've been favourites for a cup game was the Yorkshire Cup final when they said, oh, we're gonna put, we're gonna beat Wakefield Trinity, and Nigel oh. Wright decided to have the game of his life, uh, and he got a, and he got a transfer to Wigan off it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, well, there were one we played. We played a midweek game at Hull, and he put four or five youngins in. Carl Randall, yeah, big blonde haired lad, and we we won. We played really well at Boulevard. It was, I think, it was a Wednesday night or a Tuesday night game. I remember going there and winning that. Then there were the the Mark Lovell winner in the last minute. Carl Lovell, Carl Lovell winner in the last minute. That were on Sky. I remember that. That was a Pepsi kit <laughs> as well. That was a Pepsi Cola kit. Uh, no, I was the kit man that day. It was the old blue kit. <laughs> the old blue one, I thought. Was yeah. kit. No, no, no. I remember that one. Um, I had lots oh, of memories the, of that uh, day. The Easter 98, Monday. The uh, 98 Wembley kit, was it? The blue one. No, no. It was, a, it was, it was, a, it was, we called it the Pepsi Max because we had the Pepsi, which was red, white, and blue. But yeah. then we had that blue one with swirls on it. I've got one there. And uh Oh right, yeah. Oh, yeah, I and remember, it just had yeah. Avec and it had swirls on it. It, it did, was yeah, the worst kit it. to buy because when you bought it once and it bobbled like mad, it was mm-hmm. the worst Avec conned everybody. Everybody bought that kit, took it back and went, Look at the state it is, it's all bobbled to crap. It was awful to buy his replica shirt. It was <laughs> terrible. Uh, uh-huh. I just, I think mean, that day at Hull when Carl Lovell scored it, I ran on the pitch and hugged him. Next thing I know, I go home and watching it, and you see, me, and now I'm on Sky, and I'm like, oh look, there's a kit man on Sky. Yay! That was one of my favourite kit mans. I always love going to the Boulevard. A Boulevard yeah. will always be one of my favourite away games. Proper old school stadium. It was a, it was a beauty. Um, yeah. As much as I hated it, Featherston, Featherston's another old school ground, but it's Got atmosphere, there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I love this one, but this is a statement that people in rugby league will nobody will nobody will let them say no, 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 never happened. Right, since we merged in '99, Castleford and Wakefield in '99 both said they was having a new stadium. Mm-hmm. Sheffield Eagles have reformed, gone to the wire, gone full time, gone part time, won grand finals, everything. Now, 21 years, 21, 22 years later. We're getting our new stadium, and uh, Castleford is still at the jungle, and Wakefield Trinity are at Bellevue, and and they're still in Super League on the back of this. Nah, nah, no way. That's uh, dangerous. And rugby right. league says, and rugby league says, oh, if you're not going to have a ground up to standard, you'll be kicked out. Nah, I don't think so. Somehow, Depend, dep- no, but the 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 end bit on that is depending on who you are. Yeah. Just putting you off, and I know we're going off a tangent here. In uh, two weeks, the rugby league up here starts in Scotland. There's, oh, eight, right. te- there's eight teams. Oh, any of them called Eagles? Edinburgh, Edinburgh Eagles. Ah. They, they they played. Uh, they won the. Uh, they playing. The, they normally play in the North East League, hmm. Sunderland the Newcastle, but because of restrictions this year, they're playing the Scottish League. But uh, there's a team in Fife, one in Glasgow. Oh. Uh, but yeah, Edinburgh two years ago won the. I went down uh, before COVID. They played a pre-season game at Cramlington Rockets in Newcastle, and I went down for a day. And then we went to uh, the uh, Magic Weekend at Newcastle. Yeah. But uh, the guy who uh, runs them is friends with Jason. He knows Jason. He went to Sheffield Uni. Barry McGuffog. He. Uh, <coughs> The witness supporter for his sins, but yeah. yeah, that starts in a fortnight. They're playing. Uh, there's, yeah. they're all within like an hour of me as well. So I'm going to try and go up and watch them. Yeah, I said this earlier on. Um, I don't. This is completely off topic, but Sheffield Eagles kit manufacturers o- Oxen. Um, I've got an app which gives you the uh, Chinese copies. 
And if you type in English rugby, you see all this year's jerseys by Wigan, St. Helens, Hull KR, uh, amongst others, and Leeds Rhinos. And then instead of paying 50 quid, you're paying 14 quid for them. There's ours on there. I keep looking. Do you know I'm looking all the time? Um, I keep looking at it because I'm thinking, oh, I wonder if that New England kit is going to be coming on there anytime soon. Uh, but uh, no, I, I, I've told Jason about it and I told one of the general oxen, I've just said, do you know you've got your copies in the, on the China China kits? And they went, no. And yeah, yeah. So, no, you, so there you, we Yeah, yeah so there'll be a lawsuit there. Oh, God, there has to be. I mean, I've bought, I've bought rugby jerseys off that. I've got the Anzac jerseys. The great best one is I've got a South Sydney one that they don't know how to spell official correctly. It's got one eye in it instead of two. So <laughs> China don't know how to spell official. But other than that, it's fine. Um, but uh, how do you think the season's gone so far this year? I mean, we've had his ups and downs. We've just released a couple of players. I know. I was surprised at that. I think it's just a way of shaking up the squad and getting some lads in that's maybe well, just a bit more quality. Well, I don't think. I think it's. Uh, I think it's made room for the uh, players that have not been playing. The Tyson Wilsons who both played at weekend. Yeah. But uh, I'm. Uh, I'm a bit disappointed with the uh, a couple of games. Like the new. I know, and we'd won the first two, and everybody thought we'd. I thought we'd win at Newcastle, and I know Newcastle yeah. have run a run a couple of teams close, but. Batley were uh, disappointing. Although having said that, they're doing great. They're third, so mm. we'll, we'll be all right. I yeah, we'll uh, we'll just got to we'll, we'll keep us head above water. <laughs> I'm sure. I mean, we brought that lad in, that Evan Hodgson. I don't know how he played, but uh, yeah. I noticed as well. I didn't know if you'd seen it that uh, he left Keithley. He got released. Matt Hawksworth. Yeah, and, yeah. And I don't know. They said they were releasing him to take up an opportunity with a team in the championship. Yeah, I think he's signed for Jewsbury. I Has think it? he's. I think he's gone to right. Jewsbury. I mean, don't quote me on that, but I know no. he's signed for somebody else. I think. I think it was Dan Hawksworth, weren't it? And then he went to, and then he's he'd been released from his contract. Well, at Keifley, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then he's gone. I think Jewsbury have snapped him yeah. up or something. I mean, um, I, know it, I know it says that too. They've been released yeah. today for personal reasons. Yeah. And uh, this weekend we've got England versus the All Stars tomorrow, uh, yeah. and then Sunday we've got the State of Origin too. Come is, that on, Sunday? The is, that, is that Sunday? What time is that on Sunday morning? Uh, half past ten in the morning. Sunday? Yeah. I might watch that. I don't get a chance to watch that yeah. usually because obviously it's on during week. Yeah, so it's uh, yeah Sunday. The game two, Mighty Blues versus that Maroons thing where mm. they got their backside kicked to the curb a couple of weeks ago. Oh, God, I, I laughed my, giggled my backside off. I mean, because we had Bill Gardner on the day before it. I mean, that weekend before. And I was saying, who's going to win? And he went, are you serious? Are you serious? <laughs> Big Queenslander and everything. He's going, come on, it's going to be the Maroons. And as soon as I saw the score, I went, ooh. <laughs> oh, dear, Bill. Oh, oh dear, oh, hell, oh, dear hell five. Uh, but uh, no, over the next few weeks, guys, we're going to be getting back in the usual thing. Sorry we've been away. It's just I've had work and everything's been absolutely gone crazy in my life. And now slowly, slowly, it's coming back. And we're getting sorted. Sheffield Eagles, Eagle, by the way, Eagles chat is officially five years old now. We started, I started this little thing five years ago. My God, on a poxy go. little phone, looking at my phone like that and thinking, no one's going to watch this. Oh, well. and, I, and I remember getting slated for wearing a Bradford Bulls jersey. And then I remembered, I went, it's Eagles chat. It's not Bulls chat. And then it's Eagles. So I'm going to get see if I can get Mark back on, see if we can get Liam. I uh, know they've been doing the interviews and things like that. And I'm not asking for com personal first team players this season because we had we've had four on and three have been injured, <clears throat> three have been injured and two of them out for the season. Um, <clears throat> I'm not. I'm really sorry for both fellas for that. I'm really sorry to Isaac to, to I'll tell you and to Brad. I'll tell you what. I tell you what I'd be interested to hear from uh, Dean. Two yeah. people, uh, Chris Noble, the chairman. Oh yeah, and also yeah. Mark Mark Hannigan. Oh, Mark's always come. Mark will always come on the show. He'll always be on the show. Has, has he been on? Have I, yeah. Did I not? Have I not seen that? Has he been? Yeah, he's. Um, he'll always come on the show, Mark Hannigan. Always. All right, that's good. Yes, no, but Chris yeah. would be Chris Noble would be good if you could get him on. Yeah, 
Well, we've had Ian Swires on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, 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 that's what I'm thinking. Well, that, what a day that was. <laughs> yeah, it were, yeah. But it'd be good to hear from uh, Chris. Yeah, definitely. And, and to be honest, I've been trying to get, and this is how cheeky I got. A few weeks ago, I contacted the Scarborough group to see if anybody from the Scarborough group involved with the stadium would love to come on and explain how the built stadium's been built and everything. Um, I have not received a reply. I, I'm not. I'm not holding my breath on that one. Well, Especially if it was Ken Mister McCabe. There used to be a. <laughs> there used to be, a, as you know, there used to be a rugby league side called Scarborough Pirates. Yep. And uh, I think that's. Uh, we'll yeah. leave that there. We'll yeah, leave so that one there. Say no more. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, I'm gonna. Let, we're gonna finish All it right, now. Dude. Thanks, Ken. Thanks ever so much for coming on, my man. Thanks ever so much. Doing the greatest games. Next week, we'll do some more. We'll do another uh, greatest ones. Is and, anybody, uh, uh, is any, or any, any, anybody else do you want? No, next no, week, no, have no, you got nobody no, lined up yet? I've got nobody lined up yet. I've just got to put some feelers out next week. Um, right. uh, I'm going to see if I can get somebody like Johnny Bruce or somebody, or get, see if I can get Gavin Brown on or something like that from the noughties and things like that. Because we've, we've well, been doing it, we're doing it all, a lot of, all over the place, so. Yeah, but that one because that, that's a good uh, that's a good idea. Get somebody if you can that were in the original side at Chorley. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We can get somebody John, from that. Well, Johnny Johnny Bruce played, didn't he? Yeah, uh, Gavin Brown. Get Lee Bettison, whatever we can. Ah, that'd so, be good. Yeah, see on what their, can do. On there, obviously about the build up of getting back in and things yeah. like that. That'd be interesting. Yeah, I remember when we had Mark on, and he told us all stories about with the merger and everything and I'll oh. that that's the one interview I'm so proud of because the thing that gets me about this page is it's never been this this show's never been promoted outside of the page. This is just us that yeah, does yeah. it. Oh, that's good. And if ever if people from outside of the Eagles had heard that interview, it, they'd have had you've had, had quotes all over newspapers. Mark Aston says this about the merger. Mark Aston says that and it didn't, and it stays true to this. And that's the one thing that's I'm good. most proud no, of, right. because yeah. I'm not bothered about millions of views. I don't give a rat's ass about that. I just care about some of the Eagles fans knowing things that they wouldn't not normally know. And uh, I just remember that. And uh, when I see people coming in the, into the group and thinking, Rugby League Daily, what, what you've got nothing to do with the Eagles. So why are you even attempting to come into just, our group? Just after a quote, aren't they? They just have to. They just have to see what because they know they asked me to do their podcast last year. Yeah. I turned it down because I said no. I do my own for the Eagles and goes, oh yeah, what's it called? And they couldn't find it, and so they're asking me about it. And I says, no, I'm not telling you where it is. I say it's huh. going to be my kept secret. So yeah. this is the best kept secret for me for Sheffield Eagles by a mile. No, sure and I love it. I love it, and I can't wait to get up to a match. I'm really, really can't wait. I'm. I'm you know what I'm saying? Oh. I need to go and get me withdrawal symptoms. Yeah, right, mate. Right. I'll let all you right, go. You take, all right, you take care of yourself. All right, see you Cheers, soon. Bye bye, bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. Mate. bye. All right. Anyway, anyway, before we get going, a few things we've got to get take care of. Right, number one, who do you want to see on the show? Please, please don't pick this year's players. I don't. I'm not doing responsible in case they fall apart and uh, get injured. I can't bear with it anymore. I re I really, really can't bear with it anymore. Secondly, thank you very much for standing by and watching this show tonight. We've had the greatest things. It's just supporters having a chat, getting the memories and things like that. We're open to get some players on and get some ex-players, get some ex-staff, all the guys coming on the show. Um, to keep in contact with the lads. I know Liam is doing the work of a million men at once. Please be patient if you're wondering, oh, where's this, where's that, where's this, where's that. Patience, young ones, they, everything comes to those who wait. I'm blown away by the reaction of people to this. I always will. Happy birthday to us. We're five years old. It's five years now since I picked up a poxy little phone like this. And I went, I are welcome to Eagles chat. That's all I did. It's grown. We've now done a year with Zoom. We've had so many folks come on the show over the last 12 months to do with Zoom. And it's blown away the reaction to have Joel, to have Anthony, to have Brad, to have Blake, Mark, Johnny, Matt, the whole bang. We've had them all on it. And we will come and I'm going to make it bigger and better. I'm sorry I've not been around so much. Other things have been happening in my life. And I'm, I'm really, really apologetic for that. But 
the blip's over we're back okay we will see you next week we will see you next week i'll put it up the day that we're back next week i think it might be either monday or thursday again next week but we will be back to entertain you guys and have a great great time and i hope you've enjoyed the show thanks ever so much for your wonderful wonderful support you guys take care of yourselves and i'll see you next week good night god bless bye bye take care guys <laughs>